Here we are for our second week of Abide in the Word for the month of March as we look at the book of Philippians today. We're going to take a look at uh, chapter 1 verses 18 through 30. But first, I just want to encourage you, maybe it's becoming tougher to do the repeated readings. Life has gotten busy. I want to encourage you, if you're struggling to make a plan, write it out. Uh, maybe even share it with somebody. Also, maybe try and find an opportunity to bring someone else into the plan for right now. Maybe uh, you decide you're going to read Philippians once a week out loud after supper, something like that. Make a plan and do your best to stick with it because now is the time to continue to develop good habits because the warm weather is coming and being home is going to be more rare. Uh, other things are going to seem better than sitting down for 15 minutes and reading the book of the Bible. So right now is the time to continue to develop our disciplines. So as I said, we're going to take a look at Philippians chapter 1 verses 18 through the end of the chapter, which is verse 30. Hear the word of the Lord. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. One of the main themes that we're seeing in the book of Philippians is the joy that Paul finds in the midst of suffering. Now, Paul is talking here that he is imprisoned and he doesn't know if he's going to live or die. And so we get to verse 21 and he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What Paul is saying is that he can live for Christ here. He can do his ministry, but to die is to be present with Christ. And so Obviously, being present with Christ is better, but he still has work to do here on this earth. And in spite of all this up-in-the-air nature that Paul has with his future, he is still encouraging the church in Philippi to live a life that honors Jesus. Now, notice in verse 27, "...only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent..." I may hear of you that you're standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. Paul is saying, hey, no matter what happens, you have work to do here. You need to live your life in honor of what Christ has done for you. That's what he means by saying live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. Christ paid a great price for your salvation. Make sure that you live out your life in such a way to bring honor to that sacrifice that was made for you. But Paul doesn't say that that is going to lead to an easy life. Paul is actually saying, you need to find joy in the difficulty. You need to find joy in the suffering. And we see that he talks about this in a high and elevated way, actually, right? For it's been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him. Hey, we're good with that, right? Uh, it's been given to us by God that we would believe in him, how he's given us the gift of faith. This is wonderful. This is joyful. But then Paul has to throw in something else, but also to suffer for his sake. Paul sees this as something that is good, as something that builds up sanctification in the people of God, something that shows that they are doing what God has called them to do, something that shows that they are not capitulating to the world, but instead desiring to do the will of God that he has called them to do. 
And so this is a big theme in the book of Philippians, but I think it's important that we remember that this applies to us as well. As I say many times, we often think that because we're following God, we deserve to be blessed with earthly things. But here Paul is saying, yeah, you might be blessed with suffering. You might be blessed with difficulty. And so may we ask for humility. May we ask for faith. May we ask for patience so that if these things come our way, may we be faithful. May we do what Paul has said here. May we live a life worthy of the gospel, even in the face face of the hardest things we may experience in this life, whether it's persecution, whether it is uh, difficulties with loved ones, whether it is uh, disease or hardship, may we still, in the face of all of that, live a life worthy of the gospel. May God grant us that strength. And the way that he does that is by us turning to God's word and the spirit using that in us to build us up in faith so that we're seeking out Christ and not the things of this world. So it's my hope that as you are blessed with the book of Philippians, you remember this call upon our lives that Paul has for us here. May we live that life that is worthy of the gospel. Let me pray for you and then we'll be done. Gracious and merciful God, we come to you today and we are humbled by the example that you have set before us in the life of Paul. We pray, Lord, that we would have the patience that is necessary to look at the big picture, to understand that even the hardships we have in this life can bring glory to your holy name. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would live a life that is worthy of the gospel, that we would remember the price that was paid for us, and that we would, in turn, live a life of gratitude serving you and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray that you would strengthen those who are reading Philippians this month, help them to better understand and help them to grow in sanctification and holiness because of what they are learning from your holy word. It's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Okay. Have a good week. We'll see you next week as we continue to look at Philippians.